everyone, it's me Maribel again. Um, today's vlog, a little different from the other two. The other two I was coming right out from the gym. This one I'm coming home from work. It's uh, a weekday and I'm only about, I would say, six and a half weeks away from the half marathon that I am working towards. Um, now, this is a dilemma that I'm faced with often, and it's um, the fact that I am feeling super unmotivated. <laughs> like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to go outside and run. It's a beautiful day out here in California. It's 78 degrees. No clouds in the sky. Nice breeze. Beautiful day. But I am just exhausted. I am mentally exhausted. I'm not physically exhausted because I haven't done anything for last week. Um, I don't know. I don't know usually the causes of why I feel so unmotivated at times. But, you know, it's part of my process um, individually. I struggle with that a lot um, I have over the years and that's probably why I've gotten to where I am today and it's always trying to find a way around it I'm really trying to push myself to go past what I'm comfortable doing and sometimes I just get tired of pushing and I stay still and in this case I'm staying still by not working out, not going to the gym, not running, not doing anything. So, wish me luck on this half marathon that I'm gonna be doing. I'm sure tomorrow I'm gonna be right back on the horse and getting dressed up to go and work out and run and do all that other gym stuff, health stuff. But today, my mental health wins and I'm going to stay put. I'm going to hang out with my dog that you could see right here in the little mirror. Hi, Roxy. <laughs> and um, cuddle with her. And it's not a loss. It's just a break. So, you know, just have those days you have those moments where you're just discouraged and you don't want to do it and that's okay it's not okay though when you don't want to do it for a very very long time to the point where now you're back at the starting point <laughs> you don't ever really want to get there because my mom always says in Spanish Un pie para adelante, no para atrás. so you have to have your feet forward and move forward and don't look back and that's kind of always been something that I keep close to my heart and mind when I'm trying to knock myself out of these slumps so let's hope that keeps going and let me know what you guys do when you're not feeling so great and what gets you out of the slump like what pushes you forward to keep going when you're tired of pushing forward. <laughs> so, quick interruption. I completely forgot that I did not mention how I did on the 10K that I ran, which was for the PCRF uh, Reaching for the Cure run. That took place here in Irvine around March 25th. I ended up actually finishing with a personal record of an hour and 25 minutes, which let me tell you is a miracle in itself. I shaved off about 10-ish minutes from my average for a 10K, and I am elated. I was so excited, I didn't even realize that I was running, I guess, as fast as I was. Um, I actually thought I was gonna be one of the people who finished dead last, because when the group went off, I was in the back, and everyone sped off like super quick within the first mile. Um, there was definitely times where there was no one running in front of me and no one running behind me. So I am super excited. I'll, I'll put a picture right here about with my medal um, from that race. 
this was a very special race, actually. It ended up kind of turning into a very spiritual race. Um, I don't know anyone personally with the experience of having gone through childhood cancer, either themselves or somebody. However, um, there is an acquaintance of mine from high school whose first birth child um, was diagnosed with cancer. She had a brain tumor, um, at the, was diagnosed around the age of four with a brain tumor, basically. And she has recently, in the last two weeks, passed away. And let me just tell you, it is heartbreaking, heartbreaking to know that this young little girl, eight years old, passed away because of cancer. Tumors in her brain. Think about that. Now, when I first signed up for this race, I didn't do it with the intention of childhood cancer, as terrible as that sounds. It's part of the challenge that I'm taking part of, the OC running challenge. However, um, over the course of training for this 10K, um, and long actually before running, training for this race, I had been following um, Emily's journey, the little girl, uh, Emily's journey through the Instagram that her mom set up. Um, it's called Prayers for Emily Janelle. I'll include it down here. Um, and uh, for years I've been following, actually, kind of just watching from the back, um, the back of the room, I guess you could say, and just kind of seeing where it all went. Well, it was recently, after having been in remission for quite some time and she'd gone back to school, this little girl, she experienced again a relapse in her cancer, which is the worst thing anyone that has ever had cancer wants to hear. And this little girl had a relapse at eight years old. It, long story, uh, eventually she needed to have several brain surgeries. The last one, which is what led to her um, very untimely passing. This little girl, based off the information that I saw posted on her Instagram, was very involved in the community, not just her own local community, but the community of childhood cancer. She was, you know, as much as she had gone through, super cheerful girl, always staying positive, strong in her faith, never doubted that something would ever happen to her. Yet, unfortunately, it it did, and the effects of the treatments that she received is for anybody. A child is, it, it's, it puts your body through a lot. Radiation, chemotherapy, any other medications that your body needs to take in order to keep them healthy is beyond, beyond what any body is capable of handling. Some fight it better than others, and some fight for as long as they can. And Emily was definitely one of them, regardless of never having seen her in person, seeing her energy come through should be a sign in itself that this young little warrior was amazing, is amazing. And it just so happens that um, her mom created this hashtag, uh, hashtag inspired by Emily. Um, and for this race, regardless of her not being <laughs> my initial motivation for it, definitely as this race had happened, she became my inspiration. Knowing that she was in the hospital, having a hard time, and me having a hard time out on that course, seemed secondary to anything going on because this little girl was fighting for her life. And definitely inspired me to finish the race for those who can't finish the race for those who are fighting for their lives finishing the race for the children fighting for their lives and you know it definitely shook my world when her mom updated with the passing of her little girl 
nothing that any mother should ever experience that early in the child's life or even earlier yet her mom did and I wish them nothing but strength and solace and knowing that her little girl had inspired not just me for my race but I am sure and almost positive thousands if not hundreds of thousands other people out there give them a follow her mom is still updating as heart-wrenching as it is she is still putting forth the legacy of her daughter something which I saw during this race for the Pediatric Research Foundation and Pediatric Cancer Research Foundation and it's definitely inspirational it's definitely heartbreaking and it's definitely worthwhile to give attention to this to, to this movement of children that are fighting, that are warriors. And so with that, um, you know, perhaps it was the inspiration of Emily that pushed me forward into reaching the PR of my 10K that I did. Maybe. So with that being said, excuse my appearance again. <laughs> I'm coming back from the gym. Um, I'm still en route to training for that half coming up in May for Memorial Day. I am scared. <laughs> Needless to say, I am scared because it is one course filled with hills, but I will do it. I will keep my inspiration from Emmy. I will keep my own personal inspiration of my own health and well-being. And if anything, also let me know what guys, what you guys do to stay inspired, to stay motivated, right? Because that's, I think, the message that I'm trying to give for this video. What motivates you and what inspires you when you feel like you can't go? So let me know. Comment below. Subscribe. And, you know, hang in there. We'll keep running. I'll keep running. My body is sore, but we'll do it. And I'll see you guys hopefully as I get closer and closer to um, this half marathon that I'm planning to do. Wish me luck.